On today's episode of Star Wars Factions Compared, we look at the troopers of the four main prequel and original trilogy factions. Hey guys, this is Zach Artslatter. Hello and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Factions Compared. Once again, we are talking about the ground forces of the Star Wars universe. Previously, we've talked about the best army, the best blasters, and the best special forces units. Today, we'll be drawing from all of those in a way, but looking at the lifeblood of any military, their troopers. If you guys like this video and you want to see more Factions Compared, make sure to not only leave a like, but also let me know which episodes you'd like to see me make in the future. Let's start first with a look at the Empire and the Imperial Stormtrooper. Although technically there are other grunt units below the Stormtrooper, for example Imperial Army Troopers, Stormtroopers are by far the most well-known fighters within the Empire. Previous episodes have ranked the Imperial Army fairly low when compared to the other factions. However, that's largely due to the fact that their ground vehicles, in my opinion, are a step back from the Galactic Republics. Here I think the areas we want to focus on are the skill of the troopers, the equipment they use, and their weapons. Let's talk first about recruitment and training. By the beginning of the war, clones made up a large part of the Stormtrooper Corps. Not only clones of Jango Fett, but also other genetically gifted individuals. However, this really didn't last long. And by the Galactic Civil War, due to the pressure and the costs of maintaining a cloning program, the Stormtroopers were made up mostly of human males. To make up for the somewhat decline in quality of troops, the Empire implemented fairly rigorous training procedures. New Stormtrooper recruits would spend several years at one of the various Imperial Academies around the galaxy. From then, some would be moved to officers, while others would start working as Stormtroopers. Despite what parts of the original trilogy would have you believe, Stormtroopers were actually fairly skilled. We see that they're able to dispatch the Rebel Troops on the Tanta IV without much difficulty, and Obi-Wan talks about the well-known accuracy of Stormtroopers on another occasion. They also have very good equipment. I believe, for example, that the E-11 Blaster used by Stormtroopers is the best of the four major factions. They also wear state-of-the-art armor which not only provides protection but also allows them to communicate and operate effectively within small teams. Let's now take a look at the clone troopers of the Galactic Republic. I think unquestionably clone troopers have the best training of the four factions considered in this video. Clone troopers are bred from a set of high quality genetics, they're trained their entire life to kill, and really fighting in the Grand Army of the Republic seems to be basically their only purpose. Although the best of the best clones did receive extra training and were sent off to specialized programs like the ARC Trooper program or the Clone Commando program, the average trooper was still very skilled and well trained in their own right. Clones also had the benefit of spending their entire lives growing up next to the soldiers that would serve within their platoon. This helped not only foster a sense of brothership, but also allowed them to work together very effectively on the battlefield. Moving now to equipment and weaponry, by the time of the Clone Wars, most clones were outfitted with Phase 2 armor. While Phase 1 armor was fairly large, bulky, and difficult to move in, Phase 2 armor was very protective, while also being light and movable. I wouldn't be surprised if, by the Galactic Civil War era, Stormtrooper armor was somewhat improved when compared to Phase 2 armor, but the differences aren't immediately noticeable. Weapon-wise, while most Stormtroopers in the Empire used the E-11, Clone Troopers often used either the DC-15A or the DC-15S. While the S is fairly similar to the E-11, the 15A is a more efficient long-ranged weapon. It's very accurate and very powerful. I think this reflects the fact that clone troopers were fighting a full-scale war in situations where long-range weapons would often be needed. Next we have the Confederacy of Independent Systems and their B-1 battle droid. I think I will be fairly harsh on this trooper and before you guys start saying that oh, Ek is biased against the Confederacy, let's just think about it logically. The CIS used their troopers in numbers. The average V1 was not at all an impressive specimen. They had very little in the way of tactics, sophisticated intelligence, or really just fighting sense. In battles you often see B1s just standing out of cover firing. This is largely because an individual battle droid is meant to be highly disposable. Physically B1s are fine, they're rather strong, they can actually fight somewhat in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but their programming really really holds them back. 
Their standard weapon, the E5 Blaster Rifle, is also, in my opinion, the worst of the weapons used by the four main factions. It's not very accurate, it's pretty cheaply made, and it was prone to breaking. Let's now look at the Rebel Lions and the Rebel Trooper. If you remember back to my best army video, I had the Rebels in last place. However, much of that was due to the fact that I didn't believe that they had reliable armor. When I say armor, I mean ground vehicles, walkers, speeders, etc. What we know specifically of Rebel Troopers is fairly limited. However, several things can be assumed. There's no way that Rebel Troopers had the same kind of training as Storm Troopers. For one, the Rebel Alliance did not have the same resources, they hadn't been around as much, and they didn't have permanent facilities. They were, however, likely battle-hardened. Troopers probably saw a lot of battle, they were always on the run, they didn't really have comforts, and they were just generally fairly spunky. Armor-wise, the lack of resources afforded to the Rebels also really shines through here. Rebel Troopers did not have full body coverings like Storm Troopers or Clone Troopers, instead relying on relatively basic body armor. This is a disadvantage, especially when a single shot from a blaster rifle can be debilitating. However, to be fair, it probably allows for a greater range of movement and more speed. Weapon-wise, the Rebel Alliance kind of had a weird setup. They used mostly medium-ranged blaster rifles. They didn't actually have a standard-issue carbine like the E-11. That's why you see during the invasion of the Tanta IV that the Rebels have to use a DH-17 blaster pistol rather than a dedicated rifle like the Stormtroopers. The A280, which was their go-to medium-range rifle, was fairly effective and I do like the weapon, but it puts them in a difficult situation when fighting in close quarters. With all of that out of the way, let's now take the time to rank the troopers from best to worst. Coming in at number one, in my opinion, are the clone troopers of the Galactic Republic. The thing that sets these guys apart from every other fighter on this list is the fact that they are literally bred and then trained from birth to be killing machines for the Galactic Republic. This means that an individual trooper is an exceptional physical specimen and trained as well as possible. I think it is possible that Phase 2 armor is a step down from Storm Trooper armor. Any differences, I would imagine, are relatively minor. I also like how the clones have standard medium range and short range rifles, and although you wouldn't likely see a single clone with both, it does give individual squads or platoons a good deal of flexibility. But again, I think all of that is a distant second to the exceptional training they receive, and the fact that they literally grow up with their troopers that they will be fighting alongside next to for their entire life. The number two spot goes to the Galactic Empire and their stormtroopers, and I know people like to rag on stormtroopers, saying they're not very accurate and making fun of their helmets and their seemingly bulky armor, but in reality, reality, stormtroopers are actually exceptional warriors. Again, we hear Obi-Wan talk about just how accurate they are, and the advanced tactics they use to try to stay undetected. A lot of their inefficiency simply comes from the fact that they're fighting the good guys, and from a narrative standpoint, there's no way that they can win. Stormtrooper armor was state of the art and provided a good deal of protection, and their weapons, in particular the E-11 blaster, were also very effective. Stormtroopers, however, were genetically inferior to the predecessor clones. Not only that, but they also received less training. And that's that's not necessarily a bad thing. Clones are bred to fight, that's not really practical for the average living being. Stormtrooper training was still fairly rigorous, but it just can't compare to the number one faction. Coming in at number three is the Rebel Alliance and the Rebel Troopers. I think I would characterize the troopers used by the Rebel Alliance as serviceable. They don't seem to be anything special, but they're able to get the job done. One benefit that they have over the Empire, and one reason why they could perhaps get the number two spot, is the fact that there's so few of them. The Empire had so many stormtroopers that it seems evident that at some point, the quality of training and fighter would have diminished. Perhaps the Rebels got by that by using such a small fighting force. However, I think it's difficult to make up for a lack of formal training and what is, in my opinion, worse weaponry and armor. The Alliance was successful not because its troopers were necessarily better, and we see that at the Battle of Endor, but because they generally used better tactics, focusing on hit and run attacks, which were difficult to predict and prevent. All in all, I think the Rebel Trooper is fine, but nothing really to write home about. That brings us to the fourth spot on this list, the worst of the worst, the B-1 Battle Droid. B-1s are so bad that it's almost funny. To be fair though, they are meant to be fielded in sheer numbers, and the individual droid is not at all impressive. 
lacking any sort of advanced tactics or fighting sense. Unless we're talking about Mr. Bones, B1 battle droids were just plain not good, which is why they get the fourth spot on this list. At least that's my opinion. Again, from first to last, we have the clone troopers of the Galactic Republic, the stormtroopers of the Empire, the rebel troopers of the Rebel Alliance, then the B1 battle droid of the Confederacy of Independent Systems. But does your list match mine? Go ahead and take a second and vote in the upper right hand corner on which troop you think is best, and also let me know down in the comment section if there's anything you would change. Also let me know of any ideas you have for future videos, and of course if you enjoyed this please give it a like, it really helps me out. Anyway until next time, this has been Eckhart's Ladder, may the force be with you.